Okay, I'm live. Okay, let's see what size hooks we want to use. Ange, what size hooks do you want on here? Well, do you want the 5 aught or do you want something a little bit bigger? bigger. Well, you should look at these 5 aughts because they're, they're wide gap 5 aught. Hey, Jeremy. So this is usually the channel cat hook I use. It's 5 aught Reaper. I think it's the Reaper. Yeah, Reaper hook. I like it because of the gap. It's, it's got a nice gap on them. But they might go with something bigger. I mean, they got all kinds of hooks. This is that... Uh, well, you guys probably know the name of it. The one that with the, uh, where they put this on the shank. Uh, I can't think of the name right now. That's like a 10 out. That's really offset. That's more like for my flatheads. Let's see. But I think I'm just going to go with the regular. So here's a 12 watt that I use. This one here. These are all my flathead hooks. This one here might work. A little bigger than that 5 watt. See, I never liked the hooks that, uh, you see how that turns in to itself right here? I don't care for that too much. I like the point right at the eye. You got a lot of different hooks to try to choose from here. This is the big J hook. Use these sometimes with a really large J hook. Hey, Melissa. Hello. Let's tie up some rigs for tomorrow. Nice heavy one. Decide on what hooks I'm going to use.
I'm going to tie up this one. This is a heavy duty. It's about an eight aught. I don't have the package it came out of. Or I could go with these. That's like a uh, an offset. Uh, it's a bait holder. I don't know the way I want to go with these. But anyhow, we're going to tie this one up. <laughs> so the way I do it, I'm just using 30 pound leader line because it's only for channel cats. Where I'm going is mostly channels. I mean, we might get a flathead, but I doubt it. There's a chance. Of course, we'll start off with our no not snow. And this time I'm going to leave some tag end on it. I think that's why we uh, lost that one the other night. Because I didn't leave, leave enough tag end on it. I'm going to wrap this one like 10 times. Eleven wraps. He's gonna make sure everything's tight here. Keep it tight. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna wind up with here. I'll trim some of that tag end off, but not not the whole thing. Yeah, I hope you do too. Said so she missed a a nice one because the hook comes loose. The uh, the no not snell backed off. I don't see how that one's gonna back off. It's on there. There was a rod. This is just a big game rod. And it has, I believe this one's got 40 pounds slime line on it. For main line. So I'm not going to worry about the main line. And of course, we're going to do a Carolina rig. That's my slide. Slide through. And then I throw a bead on. Protect my knot. I should be doing this with my glasses on. All right. I got the bead on it. See, I can see that better now. Got the bead on. Get some line out. There we go. What I do is palbar, not my swivel.
It's just simple. So overhand knot, let's see here. Overhand knot and then go back through itself. Key is wet all this. And pull it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Trim that up. And I do like a reverse Palomar knot. It's hard to explain how I do this. I uh, take my loop and then I drop my hook down through it. I can't go around that because that's already tied. So I'll show you how I do that. First, I make my overhand knot. Okay, now, well, let me see. I'm trying to do this camera. Overhand knot. Then I just drop down through. Drop down through, make sure the tag goes through with it. And then I pull that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll be having your baby soon. Ooh, Sean Briggs, what's up? Tying up some rigs. Tying up rigs, Briggs. That's a pretty heavy hook. I'll try it if it don't work too good. I'll put a shorter one on. But I think that'll be a good hook. This should be a good hook for tomorrow. So that's a heavy one, heavy duty. Should be all right. I got the link posted. If you want to come up, Jeremy. I don't know if you're busy here. And that one's ready to roll. Mad cat's rod. Mad cat rod just needs a bigger hook. Just gonna put a small hook on it right now. Too small. Yeah, see this this hook here is just too small for what I want to do. The rest of it's good. So we'll just cut that off at the swivel. Make a new leader and hook. Come on. What's the chances of that happening? Hook it, cut them up, scissors. Here we go. Oh, look at the noodler dropping planks like a pro. 
just think you used to yell at me for going on YouTube. Now you like YouTube more than me. No, I don't know how he tied this hook on. I'll have to cut that off later. That, that's really tight on there. I'll make this one a little longer. Sit. Pick out a hook for this one. Yeah, I don't even like that one. Yeah, we'll start off with this one and try that one. A little bit bigger hooks, but I'm going to go after a little bit bigger fish tomorrow. Hey, there's Valerie Irwin. Better not be teaming up against me. This is this is Turtle Lady's rig I'm doing. I got to make sure it doesn't slip. Sid, what are you doing? Yeah, that hook's on there tight. There's no way that hook's coming off. Tie on our swivel. Sid. Oh, my dog's gonna just moan all night here. My dog's old and grumpy like me. <laughs> okay. I just drop everything down through that loop I made. Including the tag. I mean, this works for me. It's like a palm or not, except I'm not going around stuff. I'm dropping through a loop. But then, that's the second rig. So that's a nice. Julia put a lot of big bait on this hook. It's going to leave the tag long on it. I want to trim it any? I'll trim it tomorrow. This is a Mad Cat's uh, orange crush rod that she uses. It's another pen, uh, pen pursuit reel, six thousands. 
This one's got the heavy braid on the 120 braid. This gets used for everything. All right, I thought there was going to be more people coming in. But there's a lot of people live tonight. And I still have other rods to do that are outside that I didn't even bring in yet. So I guess I'm going to cut this one short. Give me a short uh, live. Yeah, I'll show you the different things I have here that I use. Well, this, most of this is like flathead stuff, but... And there's some big channels up here. We get channels up here that are 15 pounds. They can definitely get onto the 10 aught, 12 aught, 9 aught hook, no problem. So I'm not too worried about that. And these are the three ways I got for when I got to do Sandy Cooper style rigs. All right. Let's see what he said there. Oh. Yeah, you were very mean to me. Yes, you were. <laughs> That's okay, though. I have thick skin. It doesn't bother me. What bothers me right now is that I don't have my other bag in here that has all the rest of my hooks in it. And more of a selection. Right now, I got to choose between very tiny and very big. All my medium sized stuff's out in my car. You know what? Let's see. I'm trying to choose if I want to keep the live running and go grab my stuff or just cut it cut it short. Noodler, you wanna come on my live? Until I get my other stuff in here? And see we gotta get up early tomorrow. I can't. Stay live. Well, come on up and, and, and uh, you got the link. Come on up and talk while I go get my other rods. So it's not like just dead, dead air, uh, Jeremy. Is, is, can you see my thing I posted? Or do I have to post it again? Can you come up? I don't care if you're behind your icon. Let me see. You can be behind your icon and talk. Uh, two minutes. All right, let me see if I can put my uh, the link in here again in the chat. Post comment. It's still saved. Paste. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Or Melissa if hog legs there if he wants to come up. It's fine. And I'll wait till somebody comes in and then I'll go out and grab my uh grab the rest of my stuff. Thought I had everything in here. But I don't. I need to grab my bag and my other two rods. Oh, he's sleeping. Yeah, Jeremy said he'll come up in two minutes. I'm going to go grab the rest of my... I don't think where my bag is. I think it's in the back of my car. Well, actually, I think it's in my boat. Hey, Don. How you doing, Don? Okay, somebody's in my basement. Is my drink. Here you are. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. 
What's up, yeah, I decided I don't have much time because you know I work until eleven thirty at night, and then get home. At, uh, it's after twelve, and yeah, I'm going to be done at the river at eight a.m. <laughs> so there's no time to do anything, you know. Yeah, I know, man. That's a quick turnover. The life of a cat fisherman. Always, <laughs> That's right. No matter what you plan, there's never enough time. You're always going to forget something, and you're always going to be tired. I know. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. What's up, I, Melissa? What's going on, everybody in chat? How y'all doing? Mm -hmm. It is raining here. What was it raining? Yeah, oh. Yeah, we had like three days of rain. It took our river from being nothing to at least now we have a little bit of a flow. Yeah, it's normal it's now. Bad. It's bad here, man. We're, we actually have a tornado warning right now. Oh, well. Yeah, ain't, no, ain't nothing really serious. Uh, it's light. Yeah, I, didn't even, I didn't even check my weather. I hope it's not coming up here in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, ahead. Coastal my, storms that'll come right up the coast and get me. I put my filter. Where is my damn filter? Let me see if we're getting rain tomorrow morning. Hmm. Interesting. When's the baby do? Uh, on the well, on the twentieth is a day, but that's what we're shooting for. We thought it was going to come earlier this month, but her, my wife's blood pressure and stuff has uh, got a lot better. So, you know, if it's a boy or a girl. Uh, it's a girl. Oh. Cool. Yep. Very good. Yes, it's real. Your name to it? Yeah, um, uh, we're going to name her uh, Adeline. There you go. Nice. Yep, Adeline. You been out fishing at all? No, not too much, man. I, we were trying to go tonight. But this rain's been just kind of all over the place, and uh, we're planning on going tomorrow. We got a fishing tournament. Our our club season starts next Saturday night, so we're gonna we're just trying to find us a good spot and all that stuff. I got a new fishing partner this year, so yeah, is that is that with ACA your club? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It is ACA. Do you know what, what tier, like, are you a, a level one, level two? I want to say it's level, it might be level two. Yeah, I think it goes like how many boats are usually in your tournament, you know? Yeah, it's usually um between like 30 and 40. Yeah, it's probably a two. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the one I fish in is a two, and it goes anywhere from like 40 to like 50 boats every time, you know? Yeah. But, I took this season off. I took this season off with having cancer and all that. Um, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, you gotta take off with that stuff going on. Yeah, plus you know it's it's what well, you know when you do the tournaments. I mean, they're not free. You gotta pay for entry and pay for everything. So, yep. Especially when you're running your own boat. Yeah, that adds up. It helps have a partner. Yeah, it helps to have a partner, but like I, I live 150 miles from the boat ramp, so <laughs> oh yeah, huh. yeah, that's a 300 mile round trip pulling a boat, and yeah, that adds up. Oh yeah, you paying? Yeah, with the gas and everything else, and but it, you know that are are your tournaments 12 hours long? Uh, no, um. Let's see, they're usually, um, let's see, from 7 to, uh, we got a, the weigh-ins at 3, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, about 7 to 8 hours. Yeah. Yeah, ours go from 7 to 7. Yeah, I like those. So the captain's meeting's at 6, then you get on the water for 7, get off the water at 7, 
a.m. It's all night long, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And then by the time you weigh in and, and they wrap everything up, it's 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. You're just dead tired. Like You're just always tired. <laughs> you know? When money helps out. Yeah, it's another two and a half hour drive home. <laughs> After that, so. It's tough to win a fishing tournament. No doubt about that. What's up, James? What's up, Don R, Melissa? Hey, um, James. Brandon. Thanks for stopping in. Brandon, Brandon's Outdoor Adventure. Thanks for stopping in, everybody. But, uh, yeah, Jeremy, uh, I'm going to go run out and grab the rest of that gear, and I'll be right back. All right, man. What's up, y'all? I'm just here eating some uh, Cracker Barrel. Just watching it rain. That's it. I got me a hamburger steak. Mashed potatoes, macaroni, and a cornbread. It's some gravy. Mm. Yeah, no doubt, Don. It's nice having a fishing partner, man. It is. You know, a reliable, a reliable fisherman. Fishing partner. Man, it's lightning bad. I know y'all can hear that rain. I'm sure y'all can. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I got it going on. Yeah, it's pouring. That's my yeah, it is better than a lunch bowl, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I thought I'd come up here. Yeah, I know what you mean, Don. It's tough, man. It's tough to keep a partner. That's what it is. It don't matter if everything's going good or not. It, I've noticed that it seems like, you know, if, if one or the other person thinks that they can do better or if they think they know more or, um, or if they just don't like the way, you know, things are going on your boat or whatever, they'll look They'll be, you know, they won't go do it on their own. That happens. Mm. Yeah, he's excited. We just got. We just got done watching a movie that uh, it's called uh, uh, "The Beast" with the uh, it's with a family or whatever, and there's lions trying to get them. So I let him stay up late to watch it. He's supposed to have t-ball practice in the morning, uh, but I think it's gonna get canceled for sure. You know, that's another reason I can't I can't do too many of these YouTube tournaments right now because we have we have uh, T ball games on Saturday mornings and um and they didn't I didn't I mean I would I don't mind coaching it at all you know I used to play baseball and all that I knew about some baseball but um uh you know I wanted just to come and watch you know I didn't want to have to really do much you know honestly I mean I'd help if I needed to but. I waited about a week or so, and where they still didn't have a coach at practice for practices, so you know, I'd rather I'd rather do it than let's not have anybody. So, man, that was good. What's up, Valerie? How are you doing? He might be a little jelly. Yeah, he might be. He might be. 
He's pretty good. He, you know, we'll, we'll see. Hmm. It's harder bringing everything out there in the dark than it is in the daytime. I tried it, Valerie. I'm almost done with my dinner. Oh, well, my second dinner. There. All right, now I've got my other hooks here. Oh. I need to clean out this tackle box, I can tell you that much. Let me tell you, I just that's what I've been doing the last couple of days is getting my tackle ready and uh, yeah, like here's one of my bags of books. Hey, do you ever do any drifting? Drifting? Is that what you said? Yeah, drifting. <clears throat> I tried it. I tried it uh, the last time we we were up the river, and my wife didn't like it. She thought it was boring. Oh. Um. You all got a trolling motor? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's hard to do it with you got any current. Yeah, see, the last time we didn't have no current at all. Now, this time we're going to have current because we just got all that rain. Yeah. Hey, man, drifting, you can find You can find it. It's fun. It is fun after you get to – you start catching. I mean, there's a good chance you can catch five and six good fish at one time if you go over the right little area. Great. Yeah, because our channel, you know, it stays pretty much the same depth right through. It'll stay, like, in that 15 to 18-foot range. Yeah. And it'll stay like that for, like, a half mile, three-quarters of a mile. Oh. Yeah, I know what you mean, Don R, man. That That's good, <clears throat> you know. Hey, man, Kyle was partners, but I knew him and Bethany were to get out on their own this year, and you know, I don't blame them. Yeah, and he—he's definitely they're liking their they're liking their boat. You you ever use these hooks, Jeremy? The Hookers Terminal Tackle Reaper? Nope. Let me show it to you. This is a. I think it's the move. It's a seven aught. You see the way that point is made on that hook? Uh huh. We're kind of pushed back. It points back up towards the eye. I just have so I have way better luck with these. Yeah. And they're, and they're really wide gap. Like that seven knot gap is like yeah. the same gap as a ten knot, you know? Yeah, I, like, I do like that. I, I um I'm gonna check out I'm gonna try to see if I can see some of them hooks from uh Minotaur from Jamie and them. Yeah, yeah. They've been getting some and uh I, I don't like buying stuff offline that I can't see in person. I really don't like to do that. <clears throat> I feel like I waste if I, um, because all I use, man, is Eagle Claw. Oh yeah, five seven. That's it. They ain't never failed. Never had a hook. But I mean, I've been using that for. I mean, yeah, I was using these for years. These mustads. Mustad, yeah. Mustad yeah. demon. Yeah, they were cool. There's a, man, there's a lot of hooks, man. There, and there's not, I don't think there's a lot of difference in them. You know, um, I definitely don't like them super thick hooks. Um, yeah. The 2X or 4X, you know, them, whatever had, you know, them that had those on the package. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of fish missed on them. I've had some other buddies try, you know, have some. I don't, I don't mess with them. I, um, Are you, you using know, mono or braid? Uh, braided line, but I, mean, I got a monofilament leader, but yeah, I just got all yeah. braided. That's what, yeah, because like those two X hooks, I mean, they're so thick, you gotta have braid to get that hook to penetrate, you know. And yeah, you, know, you can't have too much stretch, it's gotta be boom, you know. That, mm. but you know, um, I'd like to, I'd like to have some, some, some little bit bigger hooks, you know, but yeah. Uh, I like I said, I, I use all the way up to 12-watt 
when I go for flathead. SL. I don't want to mess with those too much, man. Hey, hold on one, one second, all right? Just one second, I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. I'm just trying to get all these hooks straightened out anyhow. Gonna a big mess tomorrow. It's always a, always a mess. Everything's a mess. We've got two hooks, these ones here. And they're all they're all good hooks. It's whatever you feel confident in. Like me, I like the hooker's terminal tackle. I feel confident with these hooks. You got the reaper hook and you got the uh, backstabber hook. Really, the difference is the, the end of the hook, the point is the big difference. One kind of points has more of a point to it than the other, like towards the shank. There's the, uh, let's see. Yeah, this one is the reaper. You see how that point is? And then this one's the backstabber. Well, it's more like a, it's almost like a J hook, the backstabber. Oh, them and the minotaurs. No, these are hookers. Hookers terminal tackle. Oh, oh hookers, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've been using I've been using hookers since like 2019. Yeah, this that's is what been, I... that's been my favorite hook. I'd like to go up one size. I, I would like to go to some eights, uh, but I don't I don't need anything bigger than that, I don't think. Yeah, I got I have twelves here. Because I'm not throwing like <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name of that hook with the sleeve on it. It's a, you know, it's the offset. Yeah, that's what the. Yeah, this one here has the sleeve on it. Yeah. What the name of the hook is with that sleeve? Uh -huh. Why? Why did they put the sleeve on there? I guess when you tie your knot, it's supposed to hold your uh, your line. I'm mm. slipping. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I just got yeah. these things. That's it. Do the fancy with it. People say these ain't, hooks ain't good for the fish and all that stuff. But I can't afford paying, you know. I mean, I can get a 20, uh, 40 pack of these for 25 bucks. Yeah. You know. Is that point is the point pointed towards the shank or is it pointed up towards the eye? Yeah. Well, it kind of towards the shank, right? It's kind of towards the shank, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought I had my packs of uh huh. my packs of twelve watt hooks aren't here. Where they were at. I'm but they're backstabbers, but they're 12 watts. And they thought they were in here, and they're not. But, you know, we got... I've caught... You know, because you get it right in the corner of a fish's mouth, you know, where it should be. I mean... I mean, it's going in his mouth. You know? I just but, don't like too tight of a gap, because then you can't get through, you know, around that tooth patch. Yeah. Like these these ones here, they they were fine. The hookers, they got that white gap. Yeah, yeah, know what you mean. Yeah, so let me see what I got on my rods. Something to sharpen these hooks. Every you know, just make them a little sharper. I mean, they're pretty sharp, but I don't know until they start failing on me, or if I start missing fish or this or that, then I'll change. But you know, when you find something that works, is that's <clears throat> you use it. That's what I say. Yeah, see, I got a, I got oh, five so. on my rod now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worth retying to go to six odd or or, or go to eight odd. You know, but some of these yeah. hooks are, are not the some hooks are extremely expensive. 
Yeah, I got five, six, and seven. I think I'm just going to leave the five on for tomorrow. I'm in that tournament tomorrow morning, you know? Which one? It's on uh, Rustic's channel. Okay. The Big River. Oh, the big river. Go big or go home. Okay, I remember saying that. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's uh, one trophy for the most fish, mm -hmm. one trophy for the most weight, and one trophy for the biggest fish. That's pretty cool. So, I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't expect the biggest fish, but we might get the most fish and there you who go. Knows, the most weight, you know. But our, our channel cats are really hitting good now. That's, good. That's cool. That's what's up. I'm hoping to um get back into some of the YouTube tournaments here eventually here. I got to yeah. do them now. I don't care for the daytime stuff. It's just, I really don't have nothing good to, I mean, I can get an umbrella or something to cover my phone, but it's just, <clears throat> I mean, it's hot out there. The phone seems I like plan, it wants to over. I plan on throwing a tournament for Halloween. It's going to be like okay. a costume tournament where you got to be in costume. Yeah. Oh, wait a that minute. Sounds, just another, somebody else coming up in here. That sounds cool, man. I know, I know, uh, <clears throat> You know, Palmetto has his monster hunt on that 29th. I want to say that's on a Saturday. I'm yeah. really hoping I, I can get into that. I, There's Don R. What's up, Don? How you doing, man? How you Don? I can't hear you. Can't hear you, buddy. <clears throat> Is your microphone muted? <laughs> Don says, I see a lot of people who miss fish, <laughs> miss bites, but it wasn't the hook, it was the fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. <clears throat> That's why, you know, like, you know, some people say oh, might, maybe your hook or the way just people do stuff and it can hurt the fish or, you know, stuff like that. It's like, at least I'm not throwing them in a cooler. Yeah. I'm letting them go, I mean. You, you can have all whatever hooks that people, other people think that are, per, you know, are the best or this or that. But I, I mean, you can still have those hooks and be throwing fish in a cooler to take home. I mean, what's the difference, you know? Well, I know our river here. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even eat the fish in our river. Yeah. See, on our, our lake, man, our fish, it's, a, it's really, um, our fish are real clean, you know? Pretty, pretty clean, man. So they're 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 really good eating. All this yeah. rain, I wonder because it's gonna. Uh, I wonder you're supposed to have fl flat some flooding and stuff like that. I wonder if it's gonna really dirty up our lake. You know. <clears throat> Are you guys getting it? Like days of it or what? It's supposed to be, man. It, it was supposed to be like almost seven inches of rain around here, but it, it rained a good. It rained some yesterday, and then later on today, it's been raining pretty, pretty much the whole time. It's not too super hard, but it's been raining. Hmm. Yeah, our river was running that big at zero feet, and then we got all that rain, and now we're running four feet. Hmm. So three foot is normal. So it's four foot's just like perfect, you know. It's just nice flow, it's perfect. I can deal with that. Hey, if y'all ever decide to go drifting again, what kind of drifting weights y'all got? We got the ones from Brad Cottle. Yeah. Hey, uh, I know Brad's are good too, man. Um, but these right here, uh, we use these uh, around here, and um, I haven't had. I'll be honest with you, I've probably gotten. I and trips lost three of them mm -hmm. with, with like 10 rods drifting out there you know what i'm saying like they're yeah. very um they're not 100 percent ag proof but they're they're damn near close to it i'll be on um that is jamie and m's carolina lake weights what's a way how, how, how much is that drifting weight weigh? uh this one right here man i want to say this is a shit i want to say this is a three ounce okay Hey, this is a three. It's about, I mean, it's what about uh, fourteen inches long, maybe, something like that. Right. Uh, 
but they're made like they're flat and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> they they do they do really well. I ain't, I ain't gonna, if they they didn't, I wouldn't even mention them to it. To be honest with you, um, but uh, yeah, they make it a bunch of colors and stuff like that too, man. But they have see they have like a little clip on there. Mm -hmm. So if you have your you know your clip or whatever um on your swivel, you just clip it on there and you can take it off and swap them to your lead weight or whatever you're anchoring or whatever but um i've tried a bunch of drifting weights man over the years a bunch i got some bone town drifting weights i've had they're pretty good they're decent too man but uh these other ones are uh <clears throat> i think with this clip on there it's like really hard to break it you know they're not made to release or nothing like that and really? i think that helps pull them out of stuff but um so what i'm not i mean i've noticed a huge difference you know, and uh, he, that means you can get through a lot of other junk drifting, you know. Don, you got your mic working? Don R? Can't hear you, Don. Can't hear you, buddy. Hey, just, just exit out and come back in and see if that's the issue. There you go. <clears throat> that happens sometimes. Yeah. I know. But yeah, man, if you ever, y'all ever you know, get in a situation where, you know, your your rivers, you're not getting much water and y'all really want to try the drifter if you go to the lake, man. I'm telling you, dude, they're, they are legit. Um, I mean, we've went, I've started off with drifting like flat weights, you know, and, <clears throat> and those work good too. Um, but a lot of snags, they're just not, they're not forward drifting really. But, but I've learned with some of them heavy weights, the flat, just a, like a no roll. Yeah, bring them up on there, and I feel like when the boat, the lake's rough, and the boat's kind of bouncing up and down, that weight's coming off the bottom just a little bit, and kind of, kind of hitting the bottom, almost like a bait fish would, you know, and yeah. just give, you know, that's that's my theory on it, because I've, you know, they they do they do they do well, man, because just a little bit more noise or whatever, just something just happened, but but for being snagless, these are these are. They're damn near perfect. I'm so the top, the top of that drifting weight has foam in it to, to lift it up, or uh, no, I don't have foam. Um, it's supposed to be like an air pocket here, kind of. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how. Um, but the main thing I think is it, it's having like a clip on here, man, and, and you know how it's hooked in here or whatever. It just pulls them out, man. I, I, I promise you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell you they were they were. I promise you, if they didn't, yeah. And they, this, and they got a lot of colors and stuff. I know y'all they, they they match the mad cat poles, a lot of the colors. So huh. something check. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. I can't cool. hear you. I can't hear you, Don. Just kidding. <laughs> he hears you. Why can't hear me? So <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh, you, okay, you okay, Don, from taking your swim? <laughs> Did you fall yeah. Out? yeah, that's I'm old Navy. <laughs> Swim's not no. Hmm. Yeah. I haven't I've, did that in probably twenty years, but <laughs> I felt I felt I uh, man, uh I was little, I don't know, maybe eight. Me and my brother Kyle, and my dad was fishing, and there was gators around and stuff. But uh, I, I slipped off a rock and went right over my head, man. What is that? I forget that. Did you f figure out why your fish finder wasn't working, Don? Uh, probably operator. Error. I don't use them that much. I use them mostly just to see how deep water I'm in and. Yeah, and I have three D scan on it that's supposed to work, but I I was too busy fishing to mess with it. Yeah, I just use mine to try to find where the drop off is, yeah. you know, shallow to deep, and and try to set up on that ledge. Yeah, that's what I really use it for. I yeah. just don't wanna. Run up on the sandbars, what I'm looking for most. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that would suck. But if the wind and everything had cooperated a little, just a little bit, there was a pretty nice hole in there that I could have bumped through and then uh, dragged back through the other way, but I couldn't. Uh, yeah. I couldn't mm -hmm. stay on it. That top, between the current and the wind, it would just twist me in, in circles. When are you when are you fishing against Brad? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Brad, don't I want. All I would said was whenever he could do it. Yeah, I didn't know if there was a date set or not. Yeah. It's going to start getting down in the 30s in the morning around here. So 7 o'clock, it's going to be pretty chilly out there for me. Yeah. A little that. bit of wind, and it's going to be downright cold. I'm seeing some bad weather coming around, uh, just around you know, the Midwest up that way, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> this would be, I think we're going to have a low of 66. Um, Tomorrow night or Monday night? Yeah, we're at uh, 53 already tonight, so we'll be down into low 40s, high 30s. and So I expect a frost within a week or so. We'll have frost in the morning. Hmm. Yeah, see, here, here it stays pretty nice until about the halfway through October. Then we start getting the frosty mornings, you know, the second, third, or third or fourth week of October. It might warm up. If we usually have like an Indian summer later on. Yeah. And so it might warm up a little bit, but it'll still cool off in the dark hours real fast. You know, today was nice. It was like 82 degrees today. Yeah, we didn't quite break 70 today. Well, you're in North Dakota, right? Right. How far are you from Canada? Oh, about 150 miles. Not too far. <laughs> you get me any speed in my boat, man. Probably need yeah. to get it's funny the weather here or for y'all down your way, uh, I, uh, Iowa, Ida, Indiana, Missouri. I can see what we have just float down that way. <laughs> so I try to tell people what the weather is here, and they can expect it in about two weeks. Yeah, a few weeks later. Yeah. So I watch you all, and I see what the fishing is there, and I figure, well, in two weeks, that'll be but about what it is here, because we're about two weeks behind. Yeah, every year, though, it seems like the uh, seasons are moving. You know what I mean? Uh I think we're going to have frost in September and October, late October. I think we're going to get like an Indian sub, uh, summer where it gets warm and for about a week or a week and a half. Usually where I live, we might get three or four days of the summertime that'll hit 90. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, year, this year we had like 15 days. Maybe 20 days that we're hit 90, you know? Oh, we've had a beautiful summer. It's been in the 90s, but if you're around the river and lake, you never feel it because the water's only about 63 degrees the other day. And uh, it's just, uh, but no wind. And for North Dakota, that's unusual. Unfortunately, the only windy day we've had in a long time was Saturday or Sunday. 
I couldn't keep that boat straight for nothing with the current and wind. And current was going one way, wind was going the other way, and we we're just trying to keep it from going in circles. <laughs> yeah, you you drove pretty far in that boat. You you were off there for a while. Uh, we didn't go that far, no. I didn't even open it up, so we didn't go that far. Seemed like you went maybe five miles or something like that. Nah, I, maybe a mile. Oh, that's it? My intentions were we'd drift through that mile and then turn around and drag back up through it, but yeah. It just wasn't going to happen with the wind and the tide, or the wind and the current. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff never, <clears throat> work, you know, works with us. So we went up where it was sheltered a little bit, and basically we were <clears throat> uh, stranded on a sandbar. And the motor and the trolling motor were both are getting out of the sand. And, and it was like, well, at least it's not moving on us. So we didn't worry about it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I was right on the scene at the time. So I prayed, well, no better place to throw a line. Hey, lads. Yeah, I drove a couple weekends ago. I drove out the... I was in a place in the river uh, where I don't uh, ever, you know, drive through or whatever, but I was coming back through at night, which I was a stupid idea. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but I just, I was watching my depth finder and stuff, but I, I just veered a little bit off course, you know, ran up in the rice field. <laughs> and I, if I didn't have my lights around my boat on, I wouldn't have really realized it. You know, it just in a lot of grass and stuff like that. No, no, no. Luckily, the the um, it was high tide, you know. You're a prop, right? You got a prop, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. A lot of guys run a jet, you know, and then they, they suck up all that stuff through their jet. Yeah. That's the last time I took my boat out. It's been about two. It'll be about three weekends. I gotta go out there. Sorry, Lance. I'd sure like to see you hook up. <clears throat> yeah, it took me uh, a couple of days to recuperate from that one uh, between the wind and the rock and roll and mm. <laughs> everything else that happened. It was, I wish mm. we'd been recording when I went off the front end of the boat. <laughs> that, should, <laughs> that must have been funny to see. <laughs> it would have been. I bet, I bet your wife was scared at first, though. She probably, you probably scared her. Yeah, that I had a, one of those woolly sweatshirts on, and boy, once it got soaked up, it was about 20, 25 pounds, and <laughs> giving me the problem. I couldn't even lift my arms. But you know, my broken clavicle. After that, has felt a lot better than it did before. So I yeah. uh, got something moved in place. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet you though, I bet it felt good getting out there on the pontoon and and, and just getting out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the pontoon has handles rough weather pretty good. I was looking at video today. And boy, it didn't show how rough it was out there at all. I mean, there was white caps and and probably 18, 20 inch swells. Huh. <clears throat> so when we beached, I thought, well, that's fine. You know, all I have to do is raise my motors. Well, my electric motor was so far in the mud that I couldn't get it to raise. I'd hit it, and then I'd help pull up on it, and then it would air, and then I'd shut it all down and start over. I did that about 
four or five times and finally I got it up. And I thought, okay, now I can use the anchor to winch myself out and raise yeah. the leg motor a little bit and, and I'll be on my way. And it pretty much worked that way. But between the tide and the wind, it wanted to turn me around backwards and <laughs> it was interesting. A lady was yelling from Doc, you want me to come out and help you? Want me to come out and help you? <laughs> and I thought, what are you, crazy? <laughs> I can get it. Well, she monitors like that boat dock, and she helps a lot of people. But yeah. she said, I know the sandbar so well, I could have walked out to where you were. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she was telling me, guide me in, because it, it's probably only, oh, <laughs> maybe 100 foot wide coming in there. My depth finders weren't working. And of course, when they say you're getting too shallow, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. that's right. How long is your pontoon? 20 foot. Okay, that's what mine is, yeah. Yeah, it's just a short one, but I like it. It seems like when you go under 20 foot, that uh, space between the waves, you get beat up. 20 foot, you kind of hit the tops. Yeah. And when you get down to an 18 foot, you kind of go down and through the wave. Oh. And I kind of like that. But it handles the waves for a while. We never yeah, had any old. plastic or anything like that on the boat. Like tomorrow, <clears throat> I'll, I'll be in my boat, the, the same boat that I was out on when we fished. That's, that's a low, 18 foot low. Mm -hmm. Well, that boat, like, it's just, it's a real skinny boat. It's like 18, 18 foot long, and I think it's only 52 or 53 wide. It's it's not very wide. Mm -hmm. huh. It's a semi-V, so I, I, you know, it handles the, the waves pretty nice. Yeah. Being a semi-V. That's like what mine is. It's like a deep V type, you know, not the super, super deep V. Mm -hmm. But whatever that's in between, you know, mine does pretty and I don't have a 16 half a boat. Oh, so. 16 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably wider than mine, though. Mine's like really skinny for it, what it it is. Is. Uh, It's pretty wide for 16. I mean, I'd be, I've seen other bigger 20 something foot boats out there take a lot of water in their like, CR, the more expensive boats, and they'll take water. Who, who makes your boat? Uh, low. Oh, you got the same as me then. Well, yeah. it's yeah. probably this. What year is your boat? Uh, 2019. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine's a 2000. Mine's old. 18. I think mine. Yeah. Hey, big fishing. Indeed. Hey, adventures. How you doing? I had a pontoon for that for a while. I sold that. And, uh, I had my job. So I went from like a 22 foot pontoon to like a 13 foot D, not a DV, but like a little V hole John boat. It was still catching fish. Yeah, I, I still have six boats. Uh, four of them are, well, three of them are running right now. The the, the low, the pontoon, I got to fix the pontoon because that, that sprung a leak on me. And then I have just a small 14 footer that I take bait fishing like yeah i got a i think it's 18 foot or 19 foot look it's a lone star it's old 1963 dv mm -hmm. that's that's my next project i'm gonna work on those older boats were sometimes really good at, and they were dry boats you know yeah. go out in rough water and you hit it you didn't have that Spray coming over the top of you or anything. And well, that old boat I got, that's real similar to a, uh, like a StarCraft, you know? Yeah, that's what I had was a StarCraft 18 foot that I gave to my kids. And uh, 
that was a really dry boat. We'd go out yeah. there and it hit them and, and the spray would all go down. It wouldn't go up in the air. Mm -hmm. And if it goes up in the air, the wind here will blow it right on top of you. Yeah. Yeah, you come back soaking wet. <laughs> yep. I need to clean my. Well, I thought I was going to wind up tying a bunch of rigs and just fly with what I got here tied now. <laughs> I got on the table behind me. I'm sorting everything out and getting ready. I'm waiting for some rattles to come in and tie up some rigs so when Avid says we're doing it, I'll be ready. Yeah, I got these tank clothes is what I use. These are the ones that you can just add on your line. They're already cut. Yep. That makes it easy, easy to add them on. Boy, here you can't find nothing for catfishing. And I showed my brother in law some hooks today that I got in from, uh, oh, I can't remember. <clears throat> but uh, he laughed at me. River Cats, that's who it was from. And uh, he laughed at me. From Wikipedia. <laughs> he just couldn't believe. And I said, you know, I've been catching two pounds of fish on that size of hook. Well, I was using an eight, but ones I showed them were tens. Yeah. And I said that you know, my whole life has changed since I started this YouTube. When I started, I used a number four hook. And oh, yeah? <clears throat> I would bury it in the bait. Now I'm yeah. using uh, number eight and ten, and I'm making sure the hook's really exposed. And it's, yeah. it's made a big difference. But it was all the people that are out mm -hmm. here at these YouTubes that have helped me out doing that. So, yeah, I didn't really start watching YouTube until like 2018. Yeah. When I, started watching it. I started uh, right around the first of the year. Okay. I've never been been for a big catfish. I've always fished for just eaters. Right. You know, worms and grasshoppers and stuff like that. But so it's really changed the way I'm thinking and I'm finding that each step of the way I'm improving. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I mean I, I never thought about drifting in, until I started watching YouTube, you know, and watching that these guys drift and then using planar boards. You know, yeah. that that just Nobody around here ever did it, you know. Every tournament I've did it has been a place I've never fished before. And so it's been kind of exciting to go to all these different places. And, awesome. and I just kind of hope for the best. <laughs> there you go. You know, everybody can have a bad day. And oh, yeah. Doesn't uh, matter who you are. You can be on the best water and still have a bad day. Yeah. That's right. The good Lord work, looked after me last weekend because I only got about two hours of actual fishing in. The rest of the time I was re rigging, I kept breaking off and. And sometimes I cuss because I use a uh, 50 pound braid or something like that, and I can't get it to break off. Oh, my, I know, man. It's yeah, tough. The one we have here has got a 120 pound braid on it. <laughs> yeah. And then so the rest of the I can't uh, break it off. That's 40 tough. Pounds. 
Yeah, these are 40 pound mono, the other rods. Yeah, I got uh, from breaking it off a, a lot. Some of the reels I had to uh, re spool, but I don't mind that. I usually re spool them and then the last uh, 20 or 40 feet I put on uh, a fluorocarbon or a heavy mono. Great. And with the double uni, it go through the guides pretty easy. So the week before we fished against you, she she did real good, like seven fish, you know, and, and all kinds of bites and everything. And then the week I fished, you know, she fished against you. I could see all the fish. They're all over the fish finder. I mean, there, there was a time where I had, was marking 10 fish at once. <coughs> they wouldn't bite, you know. Yeah. They just would not bite. It was That's one thing about depth finders is you never know what kind of fish you're actually marking. And, yeah. and two, you don't know if they're feeding. And sometimes I, I find that they send me on wild goose chases more. Than, I've caught more fish marking nothing than I have something. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's the truth. There, there's times where I you know, this looks like a good spot. There's nothing on the finder. So I anchor up and, and then we catch fish versus, you know, you, you see a fish finder full of fish and you anchor up and you don't catch nothing. That's you know. Yeah, I got one spot I go to and I'm marking all these big fish. But I finally found out that they're actually sturgeon down there. But it's also really good for catfish. But uh, so between the sturgeon and the salmon this fall, I was marking all kinds of fish, but wouldn't catch much. But yeah, we 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 got we're we've been I've been seeing a lot of gar. Yeah. Uh, so we got a. That's really the only two big fish in there that you really got to. The, you know, decipher if it's a catfish or not. Yeah, yeah well, I saw that... Paul Meadow caught a nice guard the other night. Yeah. Oh, they're here, man. They're, you know, they'll be out yeah. there in 40, 40 foot of water, but they'll be up almost at the top and they'll just be chasing bait. Yeah, yeah so like got... where I fish, it won't be guard. It'll be musky, you know, to be musky in that river. Yeah. But. I never caught a muskie in the river, but I know other guys that have. But I'm not targeting them either, you know. Right. I need just need to catch a fish. I went fishing for the first time in a couple of weeks. What last weekend for a couple hours at night, we caught only three or four fish. But um, we're supposed to go tonight. Raining tomorrow. We're supposed to go. Looks like it's gonna be raining, but we have to watch it for tomorrow. I'm hoping we can get out there in the daytime tomorrow. That's what I'm hoping for. My boat, his boat, I'm going to take my boat, and we're going to split up and go hit hit a couple of different, go to an area. So like I was saying, we have a tournament coming up. What we want to do is one of us be drifting in an area and the other in the same area, but maybe hit the shallow area, like a flat right there. Or the ledge, right at the ledge, you know, one was drifting off it, one sitting on it, and just seeing what's more productive. And wait there about an hour and then move, you know, because if you fish there, you know, drifting and anchoring, you can find out really quick if there's any fish. Just keep it moving and try, just try to find the most productive spot with the biggest fish. Yeah, I was really looking forward to using the current and. Just dragging some baits back and forth across the channel, but the wind just was going the opposite direction. <laughs> we weren't going nowhere sometimes. It was just to keep the boat forward. I couldn't drop the anchor down, but it wasn't quite where I wanted to be. And, uh, once I dropped the anchor down, it's 
kind of a commitment. Yes. You know, I haven't got one that I can just grab and pull up. It's it's heavy and uh, you know I have to use the boat sometimes to break it loose and bring it up. You tell me your phone number. No, my anchor. Oh, your anchor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my you want to bring your anchor up to break it loose. Yeah. My trolling motor, it's, you know, I hit the spot lock and it couldn't keep up with the current at all. It was really struggling. and It wasn't so much, it, you know, with the current, it was keeping up, but it was going back and forth across the current so much that, yeah. and the uh, channel runs just about maybe 10 feet from shore so and it's all rock and <laughs> so we're yeah. trying to stay away from that side of it but yeah you gotta hit it right for that right? yeah my wife never that's the first time she's ever got behind that steering wheel in that boat <laughs> she just refuses to learn it she hates being out there and it gets uh, interesting. <laughs> it, it, it looked like she was enjoying it. To be honest with you. Uh, yeah, my wife don't. She doesn't come fishing with me. <laughs> <laughs> she she used to a little bit, but she's just not not too. Yeah, into you know, if they're not into it. I hate taking her. You know, and she goes just because she feels. Somebody should go with me, and yeah, that's probably true, <laughs> yeah. especially when I fall off the boat. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to start your day. I'll, I'll, I'll go fishing. My wife, she won't call me for like it'll be a while. Be <laughs> Heck, one time I went out of I went out of town all the way to North Carolina, uh, about a month and a half ago. And it wasn't about three in the morning. She texts me. She's like, um, "Are you gonna be home in the morning or tomorrow, um, or or tonight?" You know. And <laughs> I was like, "Well, we are all the way in North Carolina, so we're like five hours away." Yeah, I think my dream of going out and spending the whole night out on the lake is kind of missed it. I don't. I'm not going to be out there when it gets down to 30s at night. No, you got to do that when it's, you know, it's yeah. in the 60s at least. Yeah, yeah, when you have 90s and 70s at night. Yeah, them all nighters, man. They're they're tough, man. If you got a pontoon, that's a good one to be have. You get set up right and anchor yeah. good. You can go to sleep. It, it's. I remember I have my pontoon. We had uh, no seats in it except the driver's seat, and just bring whatever chair on there. But we, we there was a few times we'd put the tent back there in the back, and uh, put two cots in there. You know, mm -hmm. so we could actually sleep, sleep as we're fishing. You know, and just un if you unzip the back of the the tent, there was rod holders back there, so you could put rods back there and. That, that that that's when I just got in, not got just got into it, but actually started going out on a boat more. Cause I used to be a bank fisherman. I mean, for until we're probably about twenty years old, nineteen years old. Yeah, you know, we still caught caught some pretty good ones. Yeah, I've had, I don't mind bank fishing. I kind of like it sometimes. It's you know, depending on the weather and stuff, it's what I'd rather do. Yeah. Be nice to get uh <laughs> Yeah. We we have we don't have many bank spots, man. It's tough and there is one bank spot on the way. Well there's two. There's one where there's a military place you can get on that's where I go out there a good bit. Um, and then you got the hatchery, but people's been stealing like every all kind of stuff off your vehicles out there. Oh well, right in the middle of the daytime, your your Cadillac converters or whatever that they've been taking those. 
and just whatever, man. It's crazy. Melissa, you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it can be scary out on a boat sometimes, but I feel really at home once I get out of the water. And yeah. That like getting ready is the hard part, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate leaving once I'm out there. You know, you, I just like being out there. Hey, when it's over. Get all your poles ready and all that. <laughs> you know, Melissa, when jet skiers try that with me or try to run alongside me and cut in front of me, they find out their jet skis aren't fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and they they end up having to back down and stay behind me. <laughs> I love that. Uh, they come by and think I'm one of those pontoons that puts along at 10 miles an hour or something. Then. Yeah, well, you got a 90 on that, don't you? 150. Oh, one, wow. Well, oh, you hammered uh, down. Yeah, I got a 150 two stroke Avenue. Yeah, the, what's, the, what's the, top speed of your pontoon? Pardon? How fast does your pontoon go? Oh. Probably upper 30s, sometimes maybe hit 40. Yeah, it's probably. moving. That's still pretty good. Yeah, it's moving mm -hmm. for a pontoon. I don't run it that much wide open, but uh, I finally got it propped pretty good. But when I hit throttle out of the hole, I never slam it open, but it'll pick up that front end on it. <laughs> and... Uh, Doing a wheelie, <laughs> almost. I don't know. I've never hit it wide open to see how far up it would go, but but it won't take nothing to get on plane. You know, it's just a couple seconds and it's up on plane and gone. You don't really use the trim more than a couple clicks because on a pontoon it doesn't really change that much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a 75 on my belt. But I, I cruise at 25 or so usually. Um, that seems to be kind of a sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, I'm the same way. <laughs> After all the years in the Navy, I still, I, once I get my sea legs out, for the day, it's when I get on shore, I stagger like a drunken sailor. <laughs> and my, mine is when I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I lay in bed and I can feel that if it's a rough day, I can still feel all those uh, rocking and rolling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I woke <laughs> up out of my sleep like and said raw and that like I was getting a fish of all. <laughs> just, just that split second woke up was like oh wait a minute I'm sleeping it takes me longer now to get my sea legs back but I had a little uh, modified V-Haul boat in Virginia which we were only allowed 10 horse so everybody found out that the only difference between a 10 horse and a 15 was change carburetor. So we just change our carburetor. And it took me a while to figure it out because I'd be going down the lake and people would always be passing me. It's like, well, if it's 10 horse, why are these people going so much faster? I did a little research, and all it was was a carburetor change. Mm. This is the old Avenue. Put the same cowling on top, and it says 10 horse. <laughs> but I used to stand up in front of that boat and open it up, and uh, it was a stick steer. So I steered from the front with a stick, you know. Yeah. Took a while to get used to, but... 
I could stand up in front and just lean one way or the other and steer that boat all the way back to the boat landing. <laughs> but pontoon, I don't think I can do that. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Love looking through the tackle box and finding stuff that I can never find, you know. Melissa, when he gets that friend end up, tell him to trim his motor up. Mm -hmm. Don't let him. I see people out at the lake or going across. And, rrr, rrr, rrr. Man, just trim that motor down a little bit. It'll take all that bunny hop out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Melissa, who was it I was watching the other night? And I mean, it scared me watching on YouTube how they were driving. <laughs> I said, I'm glad I wasn't in with you. <laughs> Who the heck was it? They were having all kinds of problems, too. Who were they fishing? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Melissa, when he starts doing that and tell him Truman's motor down, it'll take a lot of that out of it. It'll bring that nose down and start cutting through the waves like it's supposed to instead of bouncing and skip on the cross the waves or tell them to get you a new pontoon with cushy seats so you can't feel it air ride <laughs> oh i wish i could think of what i was watching that <laughs> I go on YouTube and I watch this. Uh, it's called the Hall Over Inlet. I don't know if you ever heard of oh, that. I, I've watched that a lot too. Oh, I <laughs> love watching that. There's yeah. some great <laughs> people there. You ever watch that, Jeremy? You're talking about you're talking about when they tried to drive the boats out of that one inlet down there in yeah. Florida. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, I, I love watching that. Mm -mm. They can have. It. I get a kick out of watching that. <laughs> then they have another one that's up here in New Jersey, uh, Point Pleasant. Mm -hmm. the, been in the, uh, in the very that's yeah, I, I get I get I get a big kick watching them go through that inlet with different boats. But yeah, if you watch that, you can kind of tell what what the good boats are, you know. You betcha. I ain't you too many of them. Like good boat drivers from the bad ones. Yeah. Yeah. I, the ones I think it's crazy when they, they load up their entire family on there. And it looks like this is the first time they've taken the boat out. And they got about 12 of them in the front of the boat. And they just start taking waves over. And just <laughs> crazy. That's when you open all the doors and <laughs> move people back. Mm -hmm. They will nose dive on there if you're not careful. Yep. Yep. It's dangerous. I used to drive the pontoon for tours for the uh, Audubon uh, National Hat, uh, not Hatchery, but we would go for tours on the islands where all the birds were nesting and stuff and so I'd pull up to a spot and then I'd pull the ramp out and then they could get off and go find duck nests and stuff like that or look at the island. And that thing was long and it only had a 115 on it. Well, all the seating was up front. One day I was having a terrible time. <laughs> I think he kept nose diving. Finally, I said, you know, you're all going to have to come back here and snuggle together because I ain't got enough power to lift that front end up to 
clear these waves. So, yeah. they were just, but what's nice is they came in and they went out. <laughs> God, what's your pontoon? Is it a pontoon or a tritune? Mine's tritune. Oh, you got the third one. Okay. Yeah, that thing's nice. Yeah, having that third log is real nice. And you mount your motor on it. Is yeah, that third log your fuel tank too? Pardon? The third log, the tritune, is that also your fuel tank in that log? Yeah. Yeah, it's real nice. Yeah, it keeps it pretty well weight in the center that way. Yeah. You know, I've ran that thing all summer already, and I haven't even burned a half tank gas. <laughs> that thing is so fuel efficient that sometimes I wonder if it ain't cheaper to run the big motor rather than an electric motor. But when I park it in the storage unit, I got free electricity, so I guess it's cheaper to run the electric. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just added a, a a trolling motor on my old pontoon, and I, I didn't even use it yet. Yeah, because I, I I guess I must have split the pontoon right at the seam because the whole front of that one pontoon filled with water on me. Mm. So I'm gonna take it to a guy that welds aluminum. And he's gonna. I don't know if I should take the whole boat or if I should just unbolt the pontoon and take him just the pontoon. I. I I imagine if I unbolt the pontoon, it'd make his job a lot easier. Yeah. It'd probably be cheaper for me in the long run. Probably get a better job out of it, too. Yeah, some of these older pontoons, you know, a guy take them and uh, strip them down and, and make it the way they wanted. It, they could make a pretty nice fishing pontoon autumn yeah mine's due for a, a, a major overhaul you know take it all completely apart replace the decking on it and i think i'm going to replace the decking with that pvc board we're not even going to use wood yeah mine's a completely enclosed underbelly so it's got a sheet of aluminum that goes all the way down and yeah, everything's hidden under that, right? Yeah. And yeah, that, I got it pretty cheap. So, you know, not thinking, oh boy, I need to get a trailer now. The trailer's what costs all the money. <laughs> uh, most pontoon trailers are only, well, they used to be only about 2000 for a good one. Yeah, this one here was like thirty two hundred for the pontoon trailer. Yeah, mine has the fourteen or sixteen inch wheels on it, so sometimes it's hard to launch it for a boat dock, and I got to go in so deep. But years ago, when I had when I had those little tiny twelve inch wheels on them, and boy, I'd never go back to that. Yeah, this one has 10-inch wheels on it, but they're real fat. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're like, uh, almost they almost look like an ATV or a golf cart tire. Like, they're really fat, you know? Yeah. But it's only a 10-inch rim. Yeah, mine weren't uh, very wide either, but the problem I had was with the lug nuts. They would never stay tight, and they would huh. strip out the rims all the time. Oh, well. Well, y'all, I'm about to hop down. I appreciate you letting me come up here for a little bit. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm about to shut it down anyhow because I really should try to get a little bit of sleep before I go up tomorrow morning. No doubt. Yeah, all right, man. Good, good luck tomorrow. I'll see you later, Don. Nice all talking. right, Jeremy. I all really right. appreciate and enjoyed being up with you. All yeah. Right, no Thanks for thanks for coming up, buddy. Y'all yeah, have a good night, all right? Yeah, good night, Jeremy. All right, buddy. You too. Take care, bud.
Yeah, Don, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it up end it now and, and uh, try to get a little bit of sleep. Where, yeah, I, that's from eight. Up. I want to come up in the morning and cheer you on. Oh, good, good. Yeah, we'll be looking for you in the chat. All right. Yeah, I'll see. Like, see if I can get Turtle Lady on some fish tomorrow. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Well, we'll catch you in the morning. All right. You have a good night. Bye. Thanks, everybody in chat for stopping in. I'm going to end it now. Thank you. All right. We'll see everybody.